Let's talk about rights. This is the fifth teaching in our series on Creator Endowed Rights. In Above the Line, Below the Line, our first video in this series, we made the statement, Your rights end where another's rights begin. Now that you have had some time to ponder on what your rights are and where your rights come from, how to declare your status in an affidavit of status, and writing a lawful notification letter, we now feel it important to discuss what it means when we say, your rights end where another's rights begin. You can claim the right to smoke a cigar or a cigarette, but do you have the right to blow smoke in someone else's face or anywhere near their presence? Does not the other individual have the right to breathe the clean air his Creator provided for him? Yes, he does. Your right to smoke ends where another individual's rights to breathe clean air begins. As a moral people, is it not your duty to cease your smoking in someone else's space and put your smoke out or move to where you won't offend another's right to breathe clean air? Of course it is. If you balance your rights with the rights of others, you will quickly develop an understanding of what it means to say, your rights end where another's rights begin. If you declare you have the right to travel anywhere you want, you may be infringing on another's rights to privacy on his own property. You cannot declare you have the right to walk across another individual's property without permission. That would be trespassing and you would be infringing upon another individual's property rights and his rights to privacy and perhaps several other infringements. In the free exercise of your rights, you must be ever mindful of the rights of others around you. If you don't want others to unfairly infringe upon your rights, then be super conscientious about other individuals' rights. You might say you should have the right to get within one foot of another individual's face when speaking to them, but they might not appreciate that and feel you are encroaching upon their space. They might prefer that you stay back at least three feet from their face, where both parties can comfortably communicate without feeling ill at ease. Now, would it be proper to declare that you didn't want another individual to come within a mile of you? Certainly not. Why? Because the other individual would never be able to know if they were within a mile of you because they could not see that far. This would be an unreasonable requirement and would be considered a deprivation of the other individual's rights. It is so important to exercise the reason and logic your Creator gave you when determining and declaring your rights. If you are a bully and give someone a reason to fear you, then you are depriving others of their rights to live in peace, with peace of mind. As we bring forth these examples, your mind is probably assessing and coming to an understanding that being a conscientious individual in the exercise of your rights is mandatory. As you discover other individuals around you that demonstrate they are not a conscientious individual, it becomes all the more important why we all need to share these educational videos with our family, neighbors, and friends. When this country, starting with your own neighborhood, becomes enlightened to knowing their rights and standing up for their rights, being conscientious toward others and living above the line, we will begin to see evidence that these foundational precepts work. It is only when we as a moral people honor and respect the God-granted rights of others that we can appreciate and be confident about our own rights. Let's address our right to freely speak. Does that not also apply to us having the right to remain silent as well? We have the right to speak or not to speak. If an oath taker public servant tells me to shut up and listen to me, that person is violating my right to freely speak, my right to freedom of expression. Let's discuss religious freedoms. This may be the most abused right between individuals than any other. Our Creator has endowed us with the right to practice our religious convictions and beliefs as we believe. That also implies we have the right to abstain from religious convictions and beliefs as well. When individuals claiming to be believers encroach upon another's rights to abstain from such discussion or beliefs, it is one of those matters that breaches the mutual respect we, as a moral people, are mandated to have between each other in order to maintain peace and respect for each other's rights. We can have civil discussions, but when one party chooses not to engage in the discussion any longer, we must have respect for that individual's decision. Let's address the Fourth Amendment's guarantee to be secure in our person, papers, and effects. 
If you are asked for your identification by an oath taker public servant, you have the choice to volunteer that information if you will. That is your right. However, if the oath taker public servant demands your identification and other protected papers, you can generally ask that oath taker public servant if he has his oath of office with him. You can also ask if he understands that his oath means he will protect all your creator endowed rights that are protected by the Constitution and the Bill of Rights to which he took his oath of office to uphold. You can ask him if he understands that his oath means he will protect your right to your Fourth Amendment protections to be secure in your person, papers, and effects. Most oath taker public servants have never had to deal with upholding your rights because nearly all Americans have been conditioned by the public school system and the media to become fully compliant to every demand of anyone that looks like they work for some government body or agency. That has been a conscious compliance conditioning foisted upon the American people in the name of safety and security, but its real underlying motives have been to condition the American people into subservience and slavery. The old saying goes, there's no better slave than the one who thinks he is free. So the issue with rights can seem so vast or they can seem so minimal depending on your level of understanding of your rights. There is no better place to start to understand your rights than to read what our Founding Fathers enumerated in the Bill of Rights amended to the Constitution. The Founding Fathers knew we all had Creator endowed rights, so they enumerated a few of them so just in case there was ever a time in the history of this country when the people had become so dumbed down that they didn't know a right from a Cracker Jack box, they could read the Bill of Rights and regain a clue as to what their rights are. Let's read the Bill of Rights. Amendment 1. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or abridging the freedom of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble, and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Amendment 2. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Amendment 3. No soldier shall, in time of peace, be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. Amendment 4. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. And no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Amendment 5. No person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a presentment or indictment of a grand jury, except in cases arising in the land or naval forces, or in the militia, when in actual service, in time of war, or public danger, nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb, nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. Amendment 6. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district where the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law, and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. Amendment 7. In suits at common law, where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise re-examined in any court of the United States, 
than according to the rules of the common law. Amendment 8. Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishment inflicted. Amendment 9. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Amendment 10. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. Do you now comprehend how vast your Creator endowed rights are? They encompass every facet of your life. Start exercising your rights and do not accept the hot air rhetoric of politicians that say for your safety and security they need to tweak your rights just a bit. Sorry, that is unacceptable. You should put that oath taker, public servant on notice that any further communication indicating he or she would diminish or deprive you of a right could get him or her removed from office for violating his or her oath of office.